Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. Yeah. <laughs> the Kraft Cheese Company, who also bring you Bing Crosby every Thursday night, present each week at this time Harold Peary as The Great Gildersleeve, written by Leonard L. Levinson. Now let's visit our friend, the great Gildersleeve, who has just returned home after a busy day at the office to find that some new neighbors are moving into the vacant house next door. Ah, good afternoon, Marjorie. Hello, Hello, Bertie. Hello, Miss Gildersleeve. Well, I see the house next door has been rented at last. Have you any idea who the people are, my dear? No, Uncle Mort, but if that ghastly furniture is any indication, their name is Frankenstein. Marjorie, you mustn't judge the people by that purple horsehair sofa or the brass bed. Oh, that stuffed moose head. He has, a, he has an awful mean look in his eye, that moose head. <laughs> Must have gotten it from our new neighbor. There's a family resemblance there, all right. Oh, Marjorie, I'm sure they're nice people. You wait and see. Oh, they have a boy a little older than Leroy, haven't they? Uh-huh. And a girl about 17 or 18 who talks faster than Walter Winchell. Oh, dear. And they also got an awful uppity cook named Snowdrop Jefferson, yes. who has informed me over the back fence that she's the sole owner of five pair of rubber gloves. Well. <laughs> now, Bertie, you'll have to cultivate her acquaintance. I'll cultivate her with a hoe if she keeps snooting me. <laughs> no, Bertie, don't you want to start off by planting your best foot forward? Oh, I does, Mr. Gillsleeve, believe me. And when I gets through planting it where it'll do the most good, nothing will ever grow there no more. <laughs> now, Bertie, I won't have you starting a feud with the neighbors. A good neighbor is just like a cousin on the police force. They both come in handy in a pinch. <laughs> oh, but... Look, huh? they've been unpacking their boxes outside, and all the paper and trash is blowing over onto our lawn. Oh, so what, my dear? They're all finished, and the movers are leaving. Uh, they'll probably come over and clean it up. And suppose they don't. <laughs> well, you know, Uncle Mort, there are times when you surprise me. Oh, uh, live and let live, my dear. That's my motto. Why, in all years I've lived in Wistful Vista, I always got along well with my neighbors. Oh! What's the matter? Uh, those movers, they backed into our driveway to turn around. So what? They've crushed my azalea canadensis, and now they're backing into my ligistrum ibata. <laughs> oh, there goes my Asculus mastostrosia. <laughs> Asculus mastro what's it? For heaven's sake, what's that? It's uh, horse chestnuts. <laughs> Help me get the window up. I'll tell those no, people. No, it's too late, Uncle. They're driving away. Well, it's lucky for them. Oh, look, that heavy, heavy truck has broken the concrete in our driveway. Of all the oh, people... Oh, here I... comes the girl from next door. Oh, probably coming over to apologize for the mess they made. Well, that's different. It's a mighty good thing, too. I'll take care of this myself, my dear. Uh, how do you do, young lady? Oh, hello. I'm the girl who just moved in next door, and my name is Dorothea Dobson. Only nobody ever calls me Dorothy, and I kind of that sounds so corny, and everybody calls me Dottie, so I hope Yes, I can see why. <laughs> So you're Dottie, are you? Oh, no, I'm not Dottie. I'm Dottie. No, Mama sometimes says she fails to see the difference, and we're such an uproar that we can't find a thing, so would you please let us have a can of tuna fish and some sliced pineapple and two cups of sugar? <laughs> Wouldn't you like a couple of inner tubes, too? Uh-huh. <laughs> Come on, Anna. Come on inside. Bertie says your uh, hot cakes are getting cold and your orange juice is getting warm. Well, hello, Leroy. I'm looking for the morning paper. All over the world, hundreds of reporters risk their lives to get the news, and thousands of workers stay up all night long to print it. Then our delivery boy insists on hiding the paper in the bushes. Well, you won't find it there, Uncle. Uh, the dog that moved in next door took it. Uh, Leroy, you mustn't speak of our neighbor that way. I'm not talking about him. I mean their hound. Oh? He ran over here, grabbed it in his mouth, and scrammed back home again. See, he did it just like he was trained. Yes, he seems to have a nose for our news. <laughs> well, I'll just drop in on the Dobsons and explain the situation. Oh, I hope that dog hasn't chewed up Superman. You, of course you are. I recognize you right off, and you know why? Why? Because you look just like you did yesterday. The same suit, the same shirt, and the same tie. Isn't it awful monotonous? I'd just die if I had to wear the same dress every day, wouldn't you? If, yes. I mean, I don't wear dresses. <laughs> I dropped over to tell you that your dog is taking the morning paper. Oh, how silly, taking the morning paper indeed. Why, even if he could read, he couldn't afford it. If, 
<laughs> Miss Dobson, please, let me finish. He's taking the morning paper off our lawn. It's our paper. Oh, so that's it, and Daddy thought it was a free sample. Uh, oh, Dobby! You call on me? Oh, who's a blister, sister? Go in the dining room. Huh? Go in the dining room and tell Daddy that paper belongs to the man next door, and he's here and he wants it back, so bring it right out, and if there's any egg on it, be sure and wipe it off. Okay, but I ain't seen it yet. Why do you have to come around now? Well, Tuffy will be right back, mister. Oh, incidentally, what do you think of the big news in the paper this morning? Isn't it thrilling, or haven't you read it yet? Oh, of course you haven't. Well, you certainly have a surprise in store, because you know what happened? Oh, excuse me, I didn't know you were going to stop. You didn't put your hand out. <laughs> Uh, no, what happened? Well, it was the most exciting thing. It seems... Oh, but here comes Tuffy. You can read it yourself. I wouldn't spot it for anything. Here's your paper. Uh, so it is. Uh, thank you, Tuffy. You're welcome, Stuffy. You what? <laughs> All right, Bertie. We'll in the breakfast. I'm hungry enough to eat off the tablecloth. You got your paper okay, Uncle? Oh, sure. No trouble at all. You don't have to, you know, how to handle these neighbors. It's all right, Leroy, that's all. Yeah. Now to read the big news she was telling me about. Well, look at this. Roosevelt and Churchill meet in mid-ocean. What, again? <laughs> uh, Marjorie, Bertie, come here and listen to this. Washington, D.C., August the 4th. The August. <laughs> Never mind, go back. It's all a mistake. What is it, Uncle Mark? What happened? That kid next door slipped me a seven-month-old paper. <laughs> One more tin can over this fence, she's going to be out. Here, here, Bertie, what are you muttering about? Is that cook next door. She's flirting with a face full of skillet. Yes. And I'm going to knock her block off and off her. It'll look good. <laughs> now, Bertie, remember our good neighbor policy. Oh, hello, Leroy. Oh, good morning. Yeah, wait a minute, young man. Come back here. You're all mussed up. Tuck in your shirt tail. I can't. It, why not? It's been torn off. It, Leroy, have you been fighting? Well, not exactly. That kid next door took a couple of pokes at me, and, and then I took a few swings at him. Uh, what happened? I missed. <laughs> but he didn't. Yeah. Uh, what were you two fighting about, Leroy? What well, was something he called you, Uncle Mort? Oh, you shouldn't have fought over that. I haven't the faintest concern what that twerp says about me. What did he say? <laughs> he said you were a big, fat, stuffed shirt. Oh, he did, did he? And what did you say? I said you didn't have to stuff your shirt. Yep. <laughs> Well, I still don't think that's enough reason to start fighting, Leroy. Oh, I forgot to tell you. He was trying to rub my nose in the dirt at the same time. Oh. And look at how you skinned your knuckles. I'm going to get the eye down. Oh, no, I'll be all right. Uh, Leroy, you failed to clench your fist properly, my boy. Remind me sometime, and I'll show you the correct procedure. Gee, Uncle, did you used to be a fighter? Yes, well, not professionally. <laughs> but at college, I was considered quite a slugger. In fact, they call me Big Slug for short. <laughs> Yeah. However, I don't think you should carry on a feud with a boy next door. I'm sure this can be cleared up if we go over there and all shake hands like little men. Not me. I'm not going to shake hands with that rat. If Leroy, you mustn't call him a rat. If you only try to understand... <laughs> if, what was that? <laughs> if, who threw that baseball? It was Tuffy. Look, this is his ball. You're Tuffy? Why, that little rat. I'm going to call his mother right now and tell her about this. I'd like to lay my hands on that little hoodlum, and you know where and how... Hello. Is this Mrs. Dobson? Madam, your son Tuffy just threw his baseball through my window. Yes, I'm sure it's his baseball. What's that? If, what? If, hello? If, she hung up. What did she say, Uncle? She said if I was sure it was her little boy's ball, I'd better return it at once or she'd call the police. <laughs> uh, come on, Leroy. Where are you going, Uncle? Outside to return this ball. Are you going over there, Uncle? No, Leroy. I'm going to return it from here. You just watch this. It's headed for the telephone pole. Look, it's coming back. Oh! <laughs> there goes another one of our windows. <laughs> yes, sir. I tell you, I, I, I certainly oh, enjoy no, it. Oh, hello, Why do you doubt the man from next door was here? Uh, Mr. Dobson? What did he want? He says he wants to take you apart and see what makes you think you is as tough as you think you is. Well, I don't understand. I never said anything to him. Well, I, I guess I'd better be getting to bed. 
Uh, just a second, Leroy. Now, Bertie, what's it all about? You mean you didn't challenge Mr. Dobson to a fisticuffs, Fraker? Oh, I've never even set eyes on the chap. Well, somebody told him something most disagreeable. It's, it's way past my bedtime, folks. Uh, <laughs> wait a minute, Leroy. Did you say anything to anyone next door that might have started this? Oh, no. Only I told that tuffy that he better not monkey with me anymore, or you'd show his father what a big slug you are. Uh, yes. I'm not afraid of him. Why, Leroy, how can you talk that away? That Mr. Dobson's twice as big as your uncle and only half as fat. Yes, he... What? He is? Oh, Leroy, what are you doing to me? <laughs> Why, that man's as tough as a 30-cent steak. It's all oh, he's not so tough. Leroy, you better go to bed. Let's all go to bed. Okay, um, good night. Oh, Uncle Mort, what, what are you going to do? Uh, now, don't worry, Marjorie. I'm sure we can settle the matter peaceably. However, just to be on the safe side, tomorrow I better find some good gymnasium where I can brush up on my boxing before Brother Dobson mops up on me. Hey, Unc, be sure and let me know when you're tangled with Mr. Dobson. I wouldn't miss that for anything. Well, I would. <laughs> We'll hear from the great Gildersleeve again in just a moment. But first, ever stop to think of the progress made in the last few years? Nowadays, we have planes that fly 400 miles an hour, automobiles that are marvels of speed and comfort, radios that are static-free. Yes, and there have been plenty of improvements in food making, too. And one of the outstanding examples is parquet margarine, the delicious spread for bread made by Kraft. Why, people who remember the margarines of a few years back are amazed when they discover how deliciously good parquet margarine is. You see, parquet is not an ordinary margarine. It's one of Kraft's fine foods, outstanding for its delicate, satisfying flavor. You only have to taste parquet margarine once, spread on bread or toast or rolls, to find out how deliciously different it really is. Another thing, parquet margarine is a wholesome, nourishing food, one of the best energy foods you can serve. What's more... Every pound contains 9,000 units of important vitamin A. So get acquainted with this thrifty, nutritious food. Order a pound or two of delicious parquet margarine tomorrow. Just ask for parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine, made by Kraft. After a restless night, the great Gildersleeve has taken his problem to Philadelphia Phil's Physical Culture Institute. We find him dressed in gym togs, ready for his first lesson from Phil himself. Well, mister, so they did find a pair of shorts big enough for you after all. Uh, yeah, these shorts are a little tight. I only got them on by a great stretch of the imagination. <laughs> okay, uh, come over here, mister. Uh, uh, Mr. Just call me Throckmorton. I want to keep it a secret. Of course. If my name was Throckmorton, I'd want to keep it a secret, too. Yes. No, no, I want to keep my visits here a secret. I'm having a little trouble with one of my neighbors, and I may have to slap him a few times to bring him to his senses. Yeah, I know how it is. Now, uh, what experience have you had as a fighter? Oh, very little, except what I picked up in college and at the YMCA. Uh, you look as if the only thing you picked up at them places is yourself. Yes. <laughs> exactly. That's why I came here. I need to improve my wind if I'm going to fight. Well, the best way to improve your wind is by doing a lot of running. Mister, if I could run, I wouldn't need to fight. <laughs> well, the first thing we got to do is something about that sack of potatoes you're lugging around. If what sack of potatoes? Oh! <laughs> you mean this one? <laughs> yeah. Well, now, suppose we stop chewing the fat and start taking it off. Yeah. We'll begin with uh, some bending exercises. Yeah, bending exercises? But aren't you going to teach me how to punch? No, we'll get to the punch after we take care of the uh, punch. Oh. <clears throat> All right, now, feet together, uh. arms overhead, and bend and touch the floor. <clears throat> no, those are Morton. Lower. Come on, do it again. This time I'll make it easier. Yeah. Feet together. Now bend and touch your ankles. No, no, Throckmorton, you still haven't got the idea. I've got the idea. The only thing is, I've got much equipment. <laughs> well, feet together, arms overhead. 
Now, Ben. That's it. Way down. I'll bet you haven't seen your knees in ten years. Ben, oh, I get well by George. What is it? <laughs> I've got dimples. Say, excuse me, champ. Uh, champ? Who, me? Oh, I'm sorry. You must have made a mistake. I'm not one of the... Uh, maybe not, but... Uh? Yeah, my card. Oh, thanks. If everything from heavyweights to dog racing. <laughs> oh. Uh, you got a terrific build for the job. Build? Yeah, and showmanship, too. Oh. You know, I've been watching you. Hey, the crowds will love you. Oh, I can't quite picture myself as a champion fighter. <laughs> fighter? Who said anything about being a fighter? You're going to be a wrestler. If a wrestler? Well, sure. With your figure and the way you grunt and roll your eyes and with a full beard on your face, boy, you'll be terrific. Uh, hey, can you groan? Can I? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Does that toughy next door murder that march all day long, Bertie? No, so when he gets out of breath, he sits down and beats his drums for a while. Uh, uh, George won't be long now before I go over there and beat his drum for him. Oh. I wish you'd do it pretty soon, Uncle Morse. I can't understand why you have so much patience. There are two kinds of patience, my dear, and it takes a lot of one kind to keep from being the other. <laughs> Someday he's going to hit the right note, and then they'll take that horn away from him. I don't see how his family can stand it. Yeah, they can't. They've just chased him out in the yard. Look, I wish he was my kid for an hour. A few quick tricks with my hand, and he wouldn't trumpet anymore. Oh, now he's right under our window. Yeah? Oh! There's only one thing left for me to do, Marjorie. Do you remember where I put that old BB gun of Leroy's? Oh, no, Uncle Lord. You mustn't shoot him. Huh? Why, someone might be mean enough to arrest you. I hadn't thought of shooting him, Marjorie. I was going to offer the gun to him as a bribe. <laughs> However, your suggestion does sound better. <laughs> Please, Uncle Lord, forget about the gun. Yeah, all right. I've got another idea. The next time he starts playing, I'm going... Oh, I'm going. Don't worry. I'll be right back, Mike. Uh-oh, your uncle, he's in an unmusical mood. Oh, hope uncle hasn't done anything reckless. Let's just hope he ain't done anything they can trace back to him. <laughs> Uh-oh, here he comes. Oh, Bertie, I'm afraid. Why? He's got such a pleased expression on his face. Well, that's the last of that, folks. I fixed it all up. Oh, well, hi. Uh, what did you do, uncle? Just use my brains, my dear. I gave Tuffy a $5 bill. And he promised that he wouldn't play that trumpet again. <laughs> Pretty smart of me, huh? Oh. What's that? Oh, my goodness, he's got a saxophone, too. Okay, Flocky, you can stop now. Oh, thanks. How am I doing, Phil? Well, you've become pretty good with the punching bag. Now, uh, seeing as how this is your tenth and last lesson, I'm going to put you in the ring against a professional fighter. Oh, well, bring him on. The bigger they fall, the harder I am. Uh, well, you know what I mean, anyway. <laughs> well, I want to warn you. This guy's supposed to be good. That's all right. I feel pretty good myself. Uh, which one is he? Uh, the big guy there, shadow boxing in the ring. Yeah. Oh, yes. He throws a pretty big shadow, doesn't he? <laughs> now, come on over to the ring and... No, Sparky, no. You're going toward the dressing room. Yes, I thought I'd save you the trouble of carrying me in there later. <laughs> now, don't talk that way. You can take this guy. Yes, I can take him and I can leave him alone, too. <laughs> you kidding? I'm dead on the level. Oh, my goodness. Dead on the level. <laughs> <laughs> come on, get in the ring, Sparky. Hey, Barrelhouse. Yeah, what is it, Phil? I want you two boys to go three or four rounds together. Uh, shake hands with Battle and Throcky. Hi. Uh, hi, Barrel House. All right, boys. Now, I'll keep time, and you get in there and put up a real fight. And remember, no waltzing. Sure, sure, no waltzing. Uh, excuse me, is a little rumba permissible? <laughs> no. All right. Get going, boys. Oop, 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 oop. 
Get in there, Sparky, and try punching. Whoop! I'm trying to trade. Whoop! But he doesn't want to do whoop! This is whoop! Jab with your left, Sparky. Jab! Huh? Okay, now, back, back. I can't. It's the ropes are in my way. Jab with your left again. That's it. Keep jabbing. That's it. Now bring up the right. Uh, right? Like this? Oh. <laughs> oh, my uh, goodness, Sparky. Uh? You shouldn't have done that. You've knocked him out. I did? Throckmorton, that ain't playing the game. <laughs> oh, poor Barrel House. Quick, get me a glass of water. Oh. If get two, I'm thirsty. Oh. <laughs> yeah, take it easy. Take it easy, oh. Barrel House. I'll help you into the dressing room. Oh. Yeah, I'll take care of him. Huh? You get oh. your shower. And you can consider this knockout your diploma in pugilism. Oh. Oh, you certainly did well in your graduation exercises. Uh, thank you, Professor. I'll get going now. It's so long, Barrel House. Oh. Next time, don't try to chin yourself on my gloves. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't wait till I get home and do the same to that next-door neighbor of mine. Oh. How you feeling, Barrel House? Oh, terrible. I'm in awful pain. That big walrus stepped all over my tenderest corn. Honest, Phil, it was all I could do to restrain myself from hitting him. Next door. Yeah, do I know that brat? Well, he kept picking on me today, so finally I just got good mad, so I, I hauled off and I let him have it. Well, good for you. Yeah, I fought him clear from the corner into his backyard and up on the screen porch. You should have seen him along the milk bottles. <laughs> then his father came home and pulled me off of him. Oh, he did, did he? Yeah. Say, he's looking for you, Uncle. Oh, he is. Well, I'm looking for him. Come on. We're going visiting. Uh, this is going to be peachy fun. You mean you're going into Tuffy's house here? Yes, sir. Right now, I feel as if I could lick twice my weight in Dobson's. <laughs> Will I give that big tub a something? Oh, hello. Well, I suppose you came to apologize for what he really did to poor Tuffy. Well, it's a good thing you did because Papa's so mad he could just simply... Silence! You go tell your Papa that Mr. Gildersleeve is here from next door and wants to see him. At once. Very well, though I warn you that's not the tone of voice to take with Papa on account of his... Go! Oh... All right, I'll tell him. Oh, Papa, there's a man. Leroy, uh, could I trouble you to hold my coat for a few moments? I'm going to be a pleasure. Uh, there you are. Thank you, my boy. As soon as I roll up my sleeves here. Uh, I'm all ready now. Just let that be. Big... somebody out here says he wants to see Mr. Dobson? Oh, my goodness, it's Philadelphia Phil. Oh, this is going to be one of my bad days. <laughs> The great Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few minutes. Meantime, I've noticed that some women have a knack for being resourceful. They're always first with new recipes, always turning up clever ways to economize and please their families, too. These resourceful ladies are right in their element these days because now more than ever, it's smart to be wisely thrifty. And here's a discovery a lot of them are making, that parquet margarine is a wholesome spread for bread that tastes mighty good, yet costs very little. Yes, they found that serving parquet margarine makes a hit with the family because it's so downright delicious spread on bread or toast or rolls. They found that parquet margarine is a real flavor shortening for baking, that it adds delicate extra flavor to pan-fried foods. Yes, parquet margarine is one spread for bread that's so thrifty you can use all you want in cooking, too. Now, using parquet margarine is a wise economy because it's such a nutritious, wholesome food. Parquet helps provide pep and energy because it's one of the best energy foods you can serve. And it's a reliable year-round food source of important vitamin A. So why not buy a pound or two of delicious parquet margarine tomorrow? Remember, it's parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine, made by Kraft.
took all those boxing lessons for nothing. Oh, it wasn't altogether a waste, Leroy. They'll come in handy next Thursday evening. Oh, well, what are you doing then? I'm going to visit on Rudy Valley program. Yeah, they've matched me with battling John Barrymore. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Original music heard on this program was composed and conducted by William Randolph. This is Jim Bannon speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company and inviting you to be with us again next week at the same time for the further adventures of the great Gildersleeve. This program has come to you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company.